Sports with Lon, live from the recently renovated lobby of Bruner Dodge in Stephenville. We'll be here until 12.30, so if you're in the area, stop by. Plenty of free food, refreshments, and Tarleton Athletic Apparel, and car washes, and cars, and all kinds of stuff to give away later in the half hour. Right now, we're joined by assistant coach Nick Cantrell. So if our live audience here at Bruner Dodge will give Nick a hand. Nick, welcome to the show, man. I know you're busy uh, scouting. You were recruiting out in West Texas last night, so I know you're busy. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. You're in your eighth season as a member of the Texan basketball program. I was looking at your bio, Nick. You're kind of a jack of all trades. You've been a red shirt player. You played for two seasons, graduate assistant, and now an assistant coach. Is there anything you haven't done? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I never was a major minutes guy, you know, as a player. I was always a role player, so. <laughs> That's an <good> observation. <laughs> How tough is it, though? How tough was it to make that transition? from being a player to being on the coaching staff? Um, it, it was tough, you know, but one thing I've always tried to do is just always learn and uh, continue to learn. And, and, you know, being around Coach Chris and Coach Reese, there's, there's a lot, lot of knowledge there presented, and I just picked up on it and uh, continue to try to make myself better every day as a coach. And, I imagine one of the tough things about it is you go as you go from one of the guys to having to be a guy that the guys look up yeah, to. Yeah, and you gotta learn to separate yourself. And that was a transitional part, you know, when I was in grad school, having to separate myself. You know, you're no longer really good friends with those guys. You got the coach player relationship and um, it's a relationship I really value and you know, try to be more of a mentor to these guys. So. Now you're in your first year as an assistant coach, full time on the right. staff. How did that opportunity present itself with Jabbar leaving over the summer? Right. You know, for a while I didn't know if Jabbar was, what, if he was leaving or not, and I, so I had to look, and Coach Reisman uh, helped me with a lot of other job opportunities, and I had some interviews and stuff. And, I mean, when Tarleton opened up, I had to jump on it. I mean, there was no question. That's where I want to be. That was my dream job, and it still is. Now, when you look at the people that have been in your shoes previously, you think about guys like Jason Hooten at Sam Houston State. Yeah. You've got Rodney McConnell, who's the head coach at East Central. Ronnie Hamilton, assistant at the University of Houston. Just to name a few, Definitely. that's one heck of a coaching tree, yeah, isn't it? it? Is. It's, it's, I'm, I'm blessed to be in the position I'm in, and I know um, you know it's it's not a glamorous job being an assistant coach. It's a lot of hard work into it, a lot of late nights, and it's something that I, I really love to do, and I'm gonna continue to work hard at it. So hopefully, I can be in the shoes like these guys are right now. So how much have you learned working under uh, Lon Reeson? Oh, tons. You know, I, I came in, thought I knew a lot about basketball out of high school, but I didn't know Jack. You know, <laughs> I, mean, I, knew, I knew nothing. In the, first six months, in the first six months, I, I learned so much, uh, and I've just continued to, to pick up from these guys. And we got coached with his 25 years of experience just at Tarleton, but coaching overall, he's been around a long time, and it's just amazing picking up on the stuff that him and Coach Chris uh, present to these guys. Speaking of Jack, Coach was kind of jacked up in practice yesterday, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He was fired up. <laughs> and it's great. I love seeing Coach coming in with that fire. It gets me going. It gets the guys going. I mean, you even get the athletic trainers going, so it's a... Uh, it was a good day yesterday of practice. Now, in your role as an assistant, you wear a lot of hats. You recruit, you scout, you coach, you prepare for practice, you have to work with players, get them signed up for classes, study hall. You wear a lot of hats. What do you consider your biggest strength as a coach? My biggest strength? Um, I really like scouting. I like you know looking at the future opponents, breaking down statistical information, breaking down film, and picking up on player tendencies, coach tendencies, what, what plays they like to call. And, you know, we, we do a lot. We defend certain plays different ways, and um, I think uh, – Picking up, learning from Coach Chris and Coach Reese, and they, that's what they're really good at, and I've learned from them. So that's. I tell you, one of the things that amazes me about this basketball program, I get to see the scouting reports, and it's literally like an encyclopedia on a team. Yeah, it's very I, I mean, it's unbelievable. How long does it take you all to put together one of those? Yeah, scouting we put reports? in a lot of hours. I mean, Coach Chris really spearheads that deal, and, and you know, I assist him with that. But uh, it, we put in a lot of hours. Whether it's breaking down film, you start with the raw film, you break down clips, you see uh, what plays they're running, what they're doing on defense, how they're guarding ball screens, and. You know, it's the stuff we got to convey to those guys and, and get them on the same page. And, so, Nick, you got married uh, to former Texan basketball player Kimberly yeah, Smith in June. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Is it true the married life's better, or is it all downhill yeah, after that? I, I, so, I guess it's better. You know, it's kind of the same. I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, our relationship has been the same. It's great. I love it. Um, it's, uh, there's it's only one way to answer There's only one way, one way to answer that, Nick. No, so, <laughs> it's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. <laughs> The Texans are uh, currently 8-4 overall. You're on a two-game losing streak. How hard is that? Has that motivated you and this coaching staff to just go back to work and work even harder and oh, try to right the ship? Definitely. I mean, when, when you're losing, and, you know, there's not a lot of sleep. I can't sleep very well when we're losing. I'll stay up late at night. And I talked to a Division One coach last night when I was recruiting. He said, you guys are 8-4. and four. I mean, usually at this point, Tarleton's 11-1, and one, you know. And so he was a – it, it, we put that reputation out for ourselves, and as a coach, you know, I'm, I'm going to work hard to, to stay, you know, not eight and four. We, that's that's not good enough. We got to keep winning. Coach Cantrell, thanks for your time, man. Best of luck along the way.
That's the assistant coach of the Tarleton Texans, Nick Cantrell. We'll take a one minute break and when we return on Lunch with Juan, Coach Reisman and I will preview this week's matchups with Midwestern State and Eastern New Mexico. You're listening to the Tarleton Athletic KSTV Radio Network. And welcome back to Bruner Docs. This is Lunch with Lon. I'm Casey Hogan, alongside the 25th year head coach of the Tarleton Texans, Lon Reisman. And Coach, let's preview this week's games against Midwestern State and Eastern New Mexico. But before we do that, let's kind of look ahead at this stretch of games. you got four games. Three of them are on the road. You face Midwestern State. They've made three consecutive Elite Eights. Then you go to Eastern New Mexico. That's never a fun trip. Then you come home, take on a 10-3 and three West Texas squad. Then you go to Commerce and take on a Commerce team that just beat Midwestern State. Is there a tougher stretch this season? I think this is probably a... a, a, a Did I make the big, case? Yeah, you made the case. It's a big stretch for us, Casey. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, but if you're going to get into the hunt, you're going to have to go find some wins in those games, and there's no doubt that we're, you know, we're, we're preparing hard. And, and Midwestern's been a big rivalry for us. Uh, you know, we play them, and I think, I don't know what the record is, and two years ago we beat them three out of four. Last year they beat us two out of three, and it was a tremendous uh, game for the championship up in Allen. And so uh, it, 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 it's been, we got beaten three overtimes over there last year in a game that, you know, we really felt we could have won over there last year. And, and uh, they had a very close game at our place that we won, so <clears throat> it's been a it's been a really tough uh, battle between both both programs. The Mustangs ten and four overall, six and one, and in first place in the Lone Star Conference. They're coming off an eight point loss that I alluded to to Texas A and M Commerce uh, the other night. That broke a four game winning streak, so they're going to be pretty hungry, just as your team's going to sure. be hungry on a two game. Sure. There's no doubt about it. I mean, they're going to be they're going to be and they're at home, and and, and 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 I'm glad we're on the road. I think that that's good that we're on the road and, and for a couple of games here. And, and we can find ourselves and, uh, and, and and try to find that first road win that we need. They're averaging at Ligon Coliseum, by the way, 2,043 fans per game. That's first in the Lone Star Conference. This might be, along with Wisdom Gym, the toughest place to play in the conference. Well, and it'll be more than that tomorrow night because when we go over there and it's a big rivalry between the, the two two schools and two programs, uh, they usually have a, you know, it's usually a huge crowd. Now, I don't know if their students are back yet, but I imagine they're coming back in for the weekend. This team seems to be very balanced offensively. It's not just Corbin Thomas. We'll talk about Corbin in a minute. It's not just Corbin that can hurt you, Coach. They have four of the top 25 scorers in the conference. They've got Keith Spellman, Monzago Williams, Kevin Grayer. They all average in double figures, and you're going to have to really be intense on the defensive side. There's no doubt about it. I mean, that ball screen offense that we run, you know, they really get the ball inside. They have some outstanding post players, and, and, and then they have some perimeter people that can really score. And the point guard is, you know, he really does a great job for them. Uh, I, I, I watched him on tape this morning, and uh, you know they've really given him a lot of green light. He does great penetrator. Grayer has been with that program for a couple of years now. I think you know he's a, a really a, a good glue guy for them. You know, Caster can shoot it. Uh, I, I like I like his game. I looked at him. Of course, Corbin Thomas is probably one of the, uh, the probably if not the best big man in this conference right now. The way he's playing right now, he's. Averaging almost five offensive rebounds a game, he is you know he can really be a monster inside. And, and that was my next question: nine rebounds per game, fourteen <coughs> points, number one rebounder in the conference. Is Thomas the best big man in the conference? Well, right now, he is. He is. No, right now he is. He's averaging fourteen points and nine boards a game, and I think that's you know there's nobody that that's doing the same thing that he's doing, and so. I think right now that he he is one of the best big men, if not the best big man in the conference. The Mustangs are the number one rebounding team in the conference, Coach, plus 11 rebounding margin. They're great on the offensive glass. They average 17 offensive boards per game. Is rebounding, especially on the offensive glass, going to be the biggest key? Well, I think it is, Casey, because if you show, if you look at their numbers, they're shooting 43% from the floor. And for a team to win 10 ball games, just shooting 43% from the floor, they're doing something to keep themselves in the game. And one of them is they're getting 17 offensive extra opportunities a game. They're getting 17 offensive rebounds and how many are they converting into you know into points and so I think that that's why you see that they're they've been so good they do two things they play great pressure defense and uh, and they and they rebound the basketball and if you can do those two things you're gonna win basketball games it's your Charlton Texans and the Midwestern State Mustangs this Saturday at 6 o'clock from DL Ligon Coliseum in Wichita Falls Texas then the Texans make the long road trip, and it's very long, to Portales, New Mexico to take on the Greyhounds of Eastern New Mexico on Wednesday night. Eastern New Mexico 5-8, and 2-3 and three in the Lone Star Conference. Coach, they were 5-3. and three. They've lost five consecutive games. They lose by 19 points to Kingsville yesterday, and there's no doubt this is a team struggling right now. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're trying to find their way right now also, Casey. They were playing very well. They went into Abilene and beat Abilene this year. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, they won their home opener against Angelo. So, I mean, this is a team that is, they're, they're like anyone else. This league is going to be really, I'm anxious to see where we are in the middle of February because last night, uh, West Texas was beating Abbey Carnivore. 
and yeah. that, that doesn't they had, well, I think West that, Texas was up by nine. You know, and, and, and that's what I'm saying. You know, they had a lead like we had, and, and West Texas goes down, and they're t and for the first time, West Texas is two and three. And uh, this 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 league is very very strange right now. You got a Commerce team that that lost to East Central here earlier in the year, and they have shown their improvement. They beat Midwestern last night at home. I, I really feel like in, in this is the first time in many years that, that there could be a lot of upsets in, in, in this conference and and uh, when you get if you're, if you're fortunate enough to get to Allen and play in the conference tournament there, anything can happen. Now I don't know if you know this but you've won six consecutive great games at Greyhound Arena and we talk about how tough of a trip that is it is a tough trip but you've had a lot of success in yeah. Fort Towns. Well you know we've had you know our team's had a lot of success on the road in the last few years and we were 15 and three overall in the conference last year and 11 and one the year before so we've had a lot of success on the road and, uh, and but it let, again you have to stress that when we had those teams in there we had we had seasoned teams we had a very you know we had a lot of veterans and uh, this team is just learning to play on the road right now and and, uh, and, and so it, it, you know it, it's going to take some time for them to understand what the road is like. And one other note on Eastern New Mexico, Coach, it looks like they live and die by the three-pointer. They're first in the conference. They average seven and a half three-pointers per game. They, so if they can start hitting the three, they can take over a ball game. And, you know, if they do, they're very dangerous. And then when they don't, then, you know, you're, you, you, have, you have an opportunity to, to win. And, uh, and so, you know, that'll be a tough ball game out there. And you just have to take it one at a time and just see, you know, where you're at when it's all over. So we leave Tuesday, right? We leave Tuesday. Pretty long bus ride. About isn't seven it? hours. Seven and, hours. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> Go through Lubbock, right? Yep. Lubbock and wherever you go beyond that. You well, know. I'll be sitting behind you on the bus. I, so know that I always sit up front right time. behind the driver, and by the time I get to Portales, I see all these tumbleweeds going across the highway. Right <laughs> well, I remember we used to come back from trips and we count the deer. Yeah, we, we count the deer, deer in the middle of the That's night right. on the That's side right. of the road. So it's Tarleton in Eastern New Mexico on Wednesday night at 8.30 from Portales. Of course, it's a 7.30 start in Port Dallas because they're so far away, it's in another time zone. That's right. Uh, you can catch every broadcast of Tarleton Texan basketball right here on KSTV-FM, the Mighty 93, and online at KSTVFM.com. We'll take our last break, and when Coach and I return, we'll roll those dice to give away some free gifts for the first time as we wrap up this second edition of Lunch with Lawn. You're listening to the Tarleton Athletic KSTV Radio Network. Well, we, re we renamed this show this year. It used to be the Coach Lawn Reesman Radio Show. Now it's Lunch with Lawn. We've changed a lot of things up. We've got plated food here, really nice, from Clay's Processing and Smokehouse in Dublin. We had smoked turkey, smoked ham, smoked cheese, smoked sausage, and Coach and I, we didn't, Coach, we didn't get anything, did we? Uh, I've lost two games, so I'm not going to get much. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to thank Clay's Processing and Smokehouse. Another thing we've changed is we used to draw names. We're still drawing names for giveaways, but now you're going to roll this life-size dice that Susan Burton is holding. What's it have on it? It's got a, let's see, you get a free car wash at Bruner's. You can win your choice of two Tarleton t-shirts. You get an oil change, oil change. from Bruner's. You get a Tarleton t cap, or you get a car. Win you can car. win a car. So this is one heck of a deal right here. Wow. So let's go ahead and get this started, Coach. We've drawn two names. If you'll announce our winners, right. we'll have a couple one by one. We're, we're gonna get to, two people are going to get you. Two, two people are going to roll. Right, cut this down to one. <laughs> All right. Uh, Who's up first? Betty Key. Betty, come on down. All right, Betty. <laughs> Betty's our first contestant on, on the Lunch with Lawn show. So Betty's going to come up and roll this life-size dice. You just got to roll it, Betty. By the way, just wait. Right just let it go. There it is. What you got? Oh, wins the Tarleton hat. Wins so the Tarleton hat. Congratulations, Betty. Thanks, thanks for coming out this week. Our second winner, Coach. Yeah, you got to watch him because he might try to cheat. Oh, my gosh. Joe Bob Huddleston. <laughs> Well, Joe, Bob's, hey, Joe, Bob's, Joe Bob's got some experience with Joe this. Bob, Joe Bob, you're supposed to roll the thing, not skin it. It's got to roll. It's got to okay, roll. Here we go. Joe Bob Huddleston rolling the dice. Oh! oh the t -shirt. He didn't so, get it. I thought he'd get the I car. I he was going to get the car, but he's not going to get the car. But listen, if you're listening on the radio wow. and you're not here next week, you can win the car, oil change, car wash, hat, t-shirt. So make sure you come out. Thanks to our entire live audience wow. here at Bruner Dodge. Let's get into Tarleton Athletic Announcements Coach. Tarleton Football News. Defensive end Rufus Johnson. Defensive back Deshaun Phillips. Reed's name. First team all region selections by Don Hansen on Tuesday. Rufus also will be a part of the Texas vs. the Nation Bowl game, which will be played on February 2nd at Eagle Stadium in Allen. Congratulations to both Rufus and Deshaun. Two outstanding players, and Rufus has a chance to get drafted in it. Well, we, we, we're hearing that he's getting some play in the NFL draft, so let's hope he does. 
For the 10th straight season, the Tarleton women's tennis team enters the 2013 spring semester ranked in the Intercollegiate Tennis Association's Top 50. The Texans coached by 13-year veteran Lance Drake. Is Coach Drake here today? I didn't see him here. Oh, he is here. There's Coach Drake. There he is. Coach Drake's team, congratulations. They're the number 28 ranked team in the preseason poll. And, you know, Coach Drake, typical coach, I asked him about it the other day, and he said preseason polls, you know, good publicity for the program, but the only thing that matters is where you finish. It's a good answer, Coach. <laughs> Same answer. You, <laughs> Coach Fowler, Coach Ponder, everyone. The next broadcast of Tarleton Texan and Texan basketball tomorrow night from Wichita Falls as both squads will take on the Mustangs of Midwestern State University. The Texans tip off at 4 o'clock with the pregame show starting at 3.45 p.m., followed by the Texans at 6 o'clock. And remember, there's always a 15-minute pregame show prior to each broadcast. The Texans game, Coach, is a big one. That's the top two teams in the Lone Star Conference taking on each other tomorrow. The Coach Ronnie Hearn Radio Show every Thursday at noon from the lobby of First Financial Bank. And, of course, Lunch with Lon is every Friday at noon right here from the lobby of Bruner Dodge in Stephenville. Once again, we want to thank Bruner Motors for hosting Lunch with Lon. Thanks to Clay's Deer Processing and Smokehouse in Dublin for providing today's food. We want to thank Brad, B-Rad, back at the studio for producing the broadcast. And to our engineer, doesn't get enough credit, right over here, Justin right. Rutherford. Comes out here and sets up the equipment. And, Tears it down. Last time I did these shows, I had to set up the equipment and tear it down. So oh, I guess I owe Justin one. So thank you, Justin McClure. Appreciate all that you do. And last but not least, we want to thank our live audience here at Bruner Dodge and to each of you listening on KSTV, the Mighty 93. Coach, time now for our final question. Does being in a two to three hole in the conference with the team struggling really motivate you to work even harder as a basketball well, coach? I think anytime, you, Casey, that you're, you're struggling a bit, you, 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 you want, you're, you're looking for answers right now. And uh, right now we're looking for answers. We're going to play hard. I told the kids the other day, you know, sometimes things doesn't, don't, don't just get better all, all of a sudden. You have to work and do certain things to get your team better. And you got to do certain things to make yourself better as a team. And each individual has that responsibility, and, and so right now that we're working hard. I watched our kids. You know, you can't require kids to practice after an NCAA game. You're not allowed. So but they did the other night. I left. I mean, I looked out there when I was leaving the other night, and I had kids out there shooting free throws, and uh, I, I didn't tell them to go. I mean, I can't tell them to go out there. They just they would they wouldn't leave the gym the other night. They were so disappointed, and uh, the efforts they, there. They just sitting on the side. I went over there, and I just saw we're just setting. You know, they care. These kids care. These kids know the tradition, and uh, I'm why you know I leave the gym, and you know they're out there shooting free throws, they're out there trying to get doing little things that they, that they made mistakes on during the game, and, and uh, you know I can't say enough about the time that they put in on their voluntary time themselves. Coach, thanks for your time today. Best of luck tomorrow night in Wichita Falls. Thank you, Casey. That's going to do it for this edition of Lunch with Lon. Make sure you tune in on Saturday at six o'clock as the Texans take on the Mustangs of Midwestern State University. For the 25th year head coach of the Tarleton Texans, Lon Reisman, I'm Casey Hogan saying so long from Bruder Dodge in Stephenville. Until next time, have a great Friday, everyone, and we'll talk to you tomorrow night from Wichita Falls. Take care. Man. Sir,